Hi, this is Ray Grelak, and this is a short little demonstration on how to connect up APCC with Horizons. First of all, I suggest that you set up a few settings. So um, what I've done now is turn the power off to my mount and started up APCC without a connection here. And you should see it flashing like this with the latest version. The first thing that you should make sure is checked is auto select first virtual COM port. If it's not checked, then check that. What that will do is on this tab here, if you have no virtual port selected, it will automatically select one. The next thing that you should do is to have these two check boxes selected. The first one is auto connect COM port and create virtual ports when started. Once it's started, it's going to try to connect to the COM port and then create the virtual ports. This other option here, the second option, is auto connect to the ASCOM driver. It automatically sets up the ASCOM driver with the proper settings like the virtual COM port to use and also other settings that are compatible with APCC so that you don't need to set them up. It makes it very easy to use the ASCOM driver. That said, I'm going to shut down APCC after making those changes and you should do that too. Then turn the power on to the mount. Then start up APCC again. This time APCC should start to connect to the mount. You'll see that it's going to try to initialize. And it did. And then the ASCOM driver will automatically start up. Note that it selected a, a COM port, a virtual COM port, COM3. And everything now is all running. Once you reach this stage here, then you can go into Tools and Launch Horizons. Now once Horizons is started up like this, I'm going to show you how to uh, select data for an object, in this case Comet Lovejoy, enter it in and start tracking. So first of all, let me minimize these here and click on the JPL Ephemeris database here. And I'm going to minimize this again for right now. So looking here, you can see that um, there's, a, there's a few different um, uh, links here that you can change. So the first one here, Observer, you want to leave that as Observer, Observer Table here. Here, Change, I can specify the object. In this case, I typed in C2014 Q2, like this, and then it found Comet Lovejoy. Next is to change your location. So you can either look up your location or you can specify. I'm in San Jose, so I selected California, and I think I actually uh, typed in San Jose, California here. Did a search for it, and it filled it in automatically. The next thing is the time span. Here, you select your days. It's the 11th now. I usually like to do one day earlier, and I'm going to do a few days later. An important thing here is to change the step size to minutes. You don't want to leave it to the default, which I think is days. And then you select, you specify times. And then now I want to change the quantities here. Now if I bring up horizons again here, it tells you which ones you need to have checked, which are 2, 3, 4, 7, and 9. And others are OK. So I need to check that 2, three, four, seven, and nine. They're all checked. So I'm going to say use settings below. The last thing that you need to do is to make sure that it says plain text. I believe that the default is uh, HTML. So you want to make sure it's changed to plain text and then just say use selection. So once that's all done, you click on generate ephemeris. It's going to now create this file right here. So click anywhere inside of here and then press the Control and A key simultaneously. And you'll see everything turn this kind of uh, blue with a white uh, text on it. That means it's all selected. So that's a Control and A that, that stands for selecting everything on the page. Then you type Control C, which is copy. That's going to copy the entire contents that's selected there. Now bring up. Horizons again, and then click in this area right here. And then now press Control V. That pastes it in. 
Once you do that, you're going to see that it has started filling in information here about the comet and the start and stop and the interval and other information about it. You can't actually use the data until you connect to the mount. So when you connect, then you'll see it pop up with the current position. At this point, if I bring up the driver in APCC, you'll see that it is connected now. Okay, so now, once the data is loaded like that, we can click on Track Target. Now, when Track Target comes up, you'll see a bunch of lines here in this list, and it shows information about the current altitude and azimuth of the comet. When the You'll see some areas where it's grayed out. When it's grayed out, it means it's not visible. So, you can specify when you want to start tracking or start tracking now. If I click Start Tracking Now, it happens to tell me that the target is not above the horizon. So it is saying it's not there. I can't do it right now. But I can say I want to start tracking at a certain time and then stop tracking after that. 